In November 2015, we joined a beekeeping safari in Vietnam arranged by Bees for Development. In two weeks, seven British beekeepers travelled 1,500 miles through the country from subtropical south to temperate north. This video starts in the north near Bac Can where we met traditional beekeepers with Apis serrana, a cavity nesting honey bee common in Asia. They are often village people in remote areas for whom honey provides a useful cash income. Historically colonies were kept in log hives echoing their favoured natural nest site. Apis serrana bees in Vietnam are docile and it is not unusual to find twenty or more hives in and around the house. Mostly the beekeepers do not find it necessary to use any smoke or protective clothing when opening their hives. In log hives the bees make wild comb. After removing the end closure the beekeeper harvests honey by taking the end combs and squeezing it out. As a first step improvement, this lady in a village near Bac Can has made sun-dried clay hives in the shape of a log. Some traditional village beekeepers have been encouraged and assisted by the Vietnam Beekeepers Association to develop their skills to improve both quality and quantity of the honey crop. This includes changing to movable frame hives. There are beekeeping clubs who provide assistance, for example with centrifugal honey extractors. This village club has 24 members. In log hives a colony in Vietnam might yield 5 kilograms of honey a year, but some of the beekeepers said they could take 20 kilograms with movable frame hives. As well as log shaped hives, this beekeeper has also developed movable frame hives made from clay both round and square. I like the dummy board made of woven bamboo. She was quite unconcerned about this swarm that had settled in her kitchen cupboard. The next day we moved to another village near Bac Can where they have valuable tea plantations on the hillsides. There are 34 beekeepers in this commune. All we met use only movable frame wooden hives. The colonies are kept in the shade or protected with leaves to minimize overheating problems, particularly difficult for the smaller colonies. Another hazard for honeybees is the Asian hornet which hunts for victims near the hive entrance. The hornet either looks outwards for a returning bee or inwards for a lever. Serrana bees enter and leave the hive at speed which enables most of them to avoid being caught. In slow motion the action of hornet and defenders can be seen more clearly. Bees at the hive entrance do not fly out to attack the hornet but use a Mexican wave defense. The wave motion makes it difficult for the hornet to pick out a target. The hives are made to Langstroth brood frame dimensions but with around six frames as Serrana colonies are not as large as mellifera. Frame spacing is maintained with slips of wood between the top bars. Foundation may be used but more often it seems the bees are encouraged to draw wild comb within the frames. The comb is built around horizontal wires to give support. Honey is removed regularly as soon as frames are capped. Supers are not used. Frames with mature brood and capped honey will also be taken and the brood returned to the hive after slow spinning. This beekeeper has a manual three frame tangential extractor made locally out of stainless rod and a bevel gear probably from a motorbike. Nectar is available from February until the end of the rainy season in October. The main honey crop comes from longan and lychee trees in April and May. 
We next travelled to Sapa, a small hill town near the Chinese border with many ethnic minority people. On the main street in the middle of Sapa, Mr. Nago lives in this small house where he keeps his bees. Sixty years ago, Mr. Nago started keeping Apis serrana bees. He was just a boy who collected wild colonies and put them in a box. Initial attempts failed because he had not heard about queens. For fifteen years, he was the only person keeping bees in Sapa. Mr. Nago is still open to new ideas. For example, he uses homemade Hoffman frames. His colonies are prolific. Brood boxes contain up to ten Langstroth frames, sometimes with supers as well. This may be related to the cooler climate and shorter honey season. He now keeps twelve hives because that is all he can get on the roof of his house. You can see that Asian hornet is a significant problem here as well. In South and Central Vietnam, we visited two commercial beekeepers using Apis mellifera rather than Serrana. Italian bees were first imported in 1960 and have expanded from 200 colonies in 1976 to 650,000 colonies by 2014. The bees are extremely docile. A little smoke is used but protective clothing considered unnecessary. This beekeeper was removing wild comb after the honey season had finished. The main nectar sources for commercial beekeepers are orchard fruit trees including long ones like these and commercial forest trees such as this recently harvested acacia plantation. In this apiary 200 colonies are kept on one site in a mixed forest of acacia and eucalyptus grown for wood pulp. The nectar from these trees comes solely from extrafloral nectaries after flowering, when there are no other flowers to give pollen. Everywhere pollen is in short supply during the monsoon season. Beekeepers must respond by feeding pollen substitute to maintain colony strength. The bees are kept in a single Langstroth brood box. Supers are not used. Instead, the honey is harvested continuously. A colony can produce up to six kilos of honey a week at the peak of the nectar flow. Combs with capped brood as well as honey are taken and the brood returned after extraction. This manual 10 frame radial extractor in the middle of the apiary is used to take around 10 tons of honey during an eight month season. In conclusion, my thanks to all the beekeepers who kindly shared their skills and knowledge with us and their families and friends who generously entertained us, not least at this memorable feast near Bat Can. Thanks also to our five local guides who explained much about Vietnamese culture and history and themselves learned a little bit about bees. Finally, thanks to Bees for Development and the Vietnamese Beekeepers Association for organizing the tour.